All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, and thanks for subscribing. Uh, now that the initial shock and awe of the Tesla refresh has subsided a bit, let's talk about the Model X, shall we? And I wanna start by talking about and addressing the buzz around the Tesla community prior to the refresh, which was ripe with people speculating and insinuating that Tesla should discontinue the Model X. That's right, discontinue Tesla's flagship premium SUV. Now, from what I've seen, this was coming primarily from people who have owned older Model Xs prior to the 2020 model year, or people that are just super high on the Model Y and think that the Model Y is the only SUV that Tesla should have uh, and can compete with other brands that are coming out, other competition that are coming out with luxury SUVs. And that just simply isn't the case. The Model Y is a really, really good car, really great for the class that it competes in, both in price and size, but it doesn't compete with the full size range. Neither does the Model X fully, but it's closer than the Model Y, and it definitely doesn't compete from the luxury perspective. So I can't really say I fully understand why people would want to discontinue the Model X. But in my opinion, in order for Tesla to be successful, they need to be competitive on all fronts. Okay, and a luxury sedan and a luxury SUV, again, as close as a full-size SUV as possible. And that again is the Model X. So we were thrilled when they announced the refresh of the Model X, because that means at least for now, the Model X is here to stay. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again, the 2020 Model X and beyond, in terms of the model year 2021 and beyond, is the most comfortable Tesla, period. I'll say that again, the most comfortable Tesla period. The ride quality, the smoothness, the spaciousness of the cabin, the big panoramic windshield puts it in a class of its own and it's the best for daily driving and it's also really good for road trips as well. Uh, if you're a Tesla fan, if you're a Tesla enthusiast, you owe it to yourself to test drive one of these 2020 model years and beyond. I can only imagine how much better the refresh Model X is going to be. So let's get into it, let's talk about it, let's look at the specs on the site, and then let's talk about the detail and the designs in more detail. All right, so taking a look here on the site right now, we have a 340 mile range, which isn't that bad, but again, I would like that number to be, to be more, uh, just because the Model X is a heavy vehicle, it's gonna utilize a lot of power, but hopefully it's more efficient. So maybe it doesn't eat this range up as much, specifically in the winter months as well. 2.5 seconds, zero to 60, 9.9 .9 quarter mile, that's all fun and good. But again, as I said, this is the best car for daily driving and road trips. And then 1,000, 1,020 horsepower. I wanna make sure I get that 20 right this time for those in the comments. All right, interior, very much similar and reminiscent to the Model S refresh that we talked about. Again, the difference being the panoramic windshield. This panoramic windshield is, is the difference maker, giving you lots of visibility. And again, with that smooth ride, I think this is gonna be a really, really good fit. The wood trim also looks really good in this as well. Uh, but again, we prefer the either the darker wood, the black wood, the ebony, if you will, wood, or uh, the carbon fiber. But still, good layout, good fit. And I can only imagine, again, how comfortable the seats would be, again, with your, your seat sitting a little bit higher up in a more chair-like position, which is even more comfortable than the Model S. Again, this being the most comfortable Tesla. Okay, back seat. Looks pretty straightforward, but as it, as this picture scrolls a little bit, the back seat looks really good. Uh, looks very much similar to how it was before. Nothing really different there. No armrest as well. That was always a big complaint of the Model X before, especially when you have the captain's chair as a six-seater configuration. You had no armrest. So your left arm or right arm, depending on which chair you're sitting in, is just pretty much left dangling. Everything else is pretty much the same as the Model S. So I'm not gonna get into too many details. Again, that horizontal screen, as well as the instrument cluster. Kudos to Tesla for listening and keeping that instrument cluster and that that uh, that screen in the back as well. Okay, uh, the screen in the back is good for wireless gaming and being able to view movies and all that good stuff, as well as wireless charging in the front. So since this doesn't have the or seems to not have the rear um, armrest as the Model S does, the five seater configuration that is, it doesn't have rear wireless charging. So that must mean you're gonna have to use the ports from the back like you normally do now to be able to connect and charge phones in that second row. All right, updated speaker system, just like the Model S, nothing different there. And again, restating those stats for the Plaid version of the car. Now, one thing I did note is that there's only a Plaid version, there's a standard version, or excuse me, a long range version, and a 
basically a, a, a plaid or a performance version, if you will. There's no plaid plus. Uh, and that also is a little bit concerning, meaning that, hey, maybe they're just streamlining the process. They want to keep just two variants of it just to make it straightforward. Uh, but it also could mean something else is coming or another refresh to this could be happening down the line. Uh, either way, we're happy that it's here to stay for now. And we'll just continue on. All right. The electric powertrain is all the same. And again, looking at the long range version versus the plaid version, the specs are pretty much straightforward. Uh, one of the things we're hopeful that they fixed in this uh, new version of the Model X is that half shaft issue, that issue where sort of when you accelerate hard, you get a vibrating noise or vibrating sound in the front wheel well where the half shafts are. And it just is really, really uncomfortable to drive again, fast flooring the pedal uh, from zero to 60 is where you typically get those or flooring it in any scenario. You'll start to get that little shutter if you're even if your suspension is down low. Um, so hopefully they fix that in this particular version with the new setup, the new, uh, the new drivetrain, the new battery packs as well. All right. Even more capable. It's got the tow hitch on it as well. Again, uh, 91 cubic feet of storage capacity, uh, as well as 5,000 pound towing capacity. Now this is again, a little bit less than some other competitors like the Rivian SUV that's going to compete in this space, this EV space of SUVs. Um, but it's still good. Falcon wing doors are always great. However finicky they may be, they're always be very beneficial. Again, people with kids getting in and out, uh, but also people with disabilities, people who have a hard time getting into cars or getting in the back seat, rear seat with wheelchairs and things of that nature. This is also a very, very good uh, feature for them. So, you know, Falcon wing doors are not just good for normal use. We have to also think about those edge cases where people, you know, are not in, in normal circumstances. So again, Great feature. They are finicky. They can be finicky. They can get better over time with software, with better software, maybe even some better hardware, depending on what the situation is. But they're very, very valuable nonetheless. Lowest drag coefficient of any SUV on Earth, which is also pretty cool. Same thing with the Model S in terms of the sedans. Uh, so this is also good. And, and then again, new wheels and tire design just to make it a little bit more efficient, uh, a little bit more aerodynamic, etc. All right. Uh, so again, go anywhere. Superchargers are abound, but now you have 360 miles uh, of range to play with. Uh, and then you have 170 miles in 15 minutes based on a sh supercharging capacity of 250 kilowatts. So this is all good, all fine. And it looks very much the same, which is not a bad thing. Again, the Model X is a great looking vehicle. Uh, it can take on a egg like shape or a buggy type shape, depending on the angle that, that it's on. But for the most part, it's a really good, really sleek, really futuristic looking vehicle. And these additions to the designs have just made it that much better. So we'll jump over now and take a look at some of the images and take a little closer look at the design elements and compare what it used to look like before versus what it looks like now. All right, taking a look at some of the pictures, we'll look at some of the practical pictures, the realistic looking pictures. Then we'll take a look at some of the renders and see how they compare to see what subtle differences Tesla's made with the Model X. Okay, so right now you have the performance variant of the classic Model X, we'll call it right now. Uh, specifically, you'll notice that the front fender looks the way that it looks. Um, and then there's a bit cr of chrome. It's a little bit darker because it's sunset in this particular picture, but there is some chrome on the, on the sill of the windows, the rim of the windows, as well as the turn signal, uh, as well as the door handles as well. Uh, and that's pretty much what it looks like. Uh, let's take a look at the newer updated version of this picture here. Okay, as you see the difference is they sort of clean this up a bit, the front fa fascia or front fascia area, however you like to pronounce it. Uh, but this particular area has been cleaned up a bit and then now you have no more chrome. Now you have that matte black uh, sort of chrome delete, factory chrome delete here where the edges of this are, are all black and there is no Chrome except for the Tesla logo in the front, which is a good look. Okay, so again, subtle changes. Let's take you back really quickly so you can see the difference. Here's the initial uh, classic Model X, and now here's the newer version of it. All right, so let's take a look at some of the different angles and see if we can spot any more differences here, any more changes. Let's take a look at a three-quarter view. Here's a three-quarter view, front three-quarter, I should say. And right now, again, same standard fare will we'll now transition to more of the black Tesla than the white Tesla, uh, but same standard fare, the 22 inch wheels, the red brake calipers, the front fascia has the lights on it uh, with the chrome and then the chrome trim all around. And then let's compare the new one 
which takes on a little bit of a steeper angle for the three quarter view, but you can still see the details. Again, the front is more blacked out and it looks really, really good in black because you have the black chrome delete on top of the black paint, it makes it really seamless and makes the details pop more. So the lights start to pop more. Um, the floodlights will probably pop more as well if they were on. And then you have that, that, that uh, silver Tesla T in the front that just stands out above all the rest. And again, with those darker wheels and the red calipers here. Again, different type of wheel, more streamlined, more flush. These look, these look pretty cool. I'm not mad at these. Um, the standard wheels in the Model S are pretty bad, uh, but these wheels aren't that bad either. And the standard wheels in the Model X as well aren't as bad either. Uh, so those are preferred. Okay, let's take a look at the rear. Taking a look at the rear, nothing much is, is, is probably changed here as well. But again, it just looks really good to have that contrast, what it was before with the chrome. And then now we have the new one here uh, with all the black and then the red lights stand out more. Even the Tesla uh, sort of band that goes across the back is also uh, blacked out. But the T, the Tesla T seems to be the constant that's always silver and not blacked out, which is good because it helps it stand out. All right. Good detail here. Nothing really major to talk about here in terms of the design. Again, very, very, very similar to how they were before. Uh, nothing really changes. Here's the original. Okay, now here's the change. Here's the updated one. Nothing's really changed. Uh, I do notice that the black seems to be more of a pearlescent black, similar to the obsidian black versus the uh, solid black, even though they call it solid black on the uh, on the actual website, on the configurator. All right, so let's look at the side. Here's the side of the classic Model X. Again, really cool. And here's where it starts to look a little bit uh, buggy or egg-shaped, which is you know, not terrible, but uh, it is what it is. And then here's a new version of the side. Uh, still looks a little buggy. Maybe it looks a little bit crisper in the front a little bit. If I go back and forth between the two, I can probably see that a little bit better. I think the wheels help bring it together a lot better in this new version. Okay, so go back to the original. Here's what it looks like with, with, the, with the chrome on it. And here's the newer one. Okay, back again. Here it is again. Okay, so pretty, pretty straightforward. Now here's the detail that I wanted to show and wanted to point out is to look at the width of it. So if we now look at the classic front view, this is the classic front view um, that they have. Again, a render, not the actual car. Uh, you see all the details that we talked about before. Uh, but if we now transition to the newer one, the newer updated version of this, um, we can now compare and contrast and see if it looks a little bit wider or exactly the same. It kind of looks the same, but again, this is a render. It's hard to really tell until you actually get the car, but it definitely does look more aggressive here as well. Uh, some people are speculating that the headlights are different. I don't think that they're different. I think that they're just taking on different characteristics now that some other elements are sort of toned down, specifically the chrome, or as well as the angle that they're, you know, sort of rendering this uh, the shot at as well. So right now it just looks pretty good. Um, a lot cleaner, a lot more uniform with the design language of the Model 3 and Model Y. Looks like they belong in the same family. Uh, but again, here was the classic, more angular, more lines. And again, now the new one, more streamlined, more smooth areas, less lines in terms of uh, places where air can flow. Uh, so it seems to be more aerodynamic in that regard. So that's pretty much it. Uh, Model X stays very much the same, but also very different. I'm glad that it stayed alive. I'm glad that they're, they're sticking with it. Uh, because there is some competition coming in this space and the model y again great car just doesn't compete in this space for the price and the luxury amenities that people expect when you're talking about a car of this of this stature all right so let me know your thoughts in the comments let me know what you thought about the model x refresh are you excited are you not excited even though the design exterior wise didn't change that much uh, are you still big on it or are you not not as big on it do you still want them to discontinue it for those who want to discontinue it do you want them to work on something different or focus on the model y let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let's talk about it. Until the next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.